Hey there, Elisa from Hotel Spider. Hello and welcome to the second Ask Your Hotel Techie video. We are sharing our know-how about hotel technology with you in video format. So feel free to ask your own questions. Let me know where you agree and disagree with my ideas. In this second video, I wanna talk about integrations and I would also like to demystify some of the elements around APIs and XML messages. But why are integrations so important? Today, we're using more and more tools every day, and it is crucial that they communicate to each other. If not, you will have data silos. That means that you will have duplicate content, duplicate information in many different systems, and you will not be able to automate any processes. You will have to enter information manually over and over again. I came across an interesting study by Fuel Travel in 2018. They asked hoteliers, but also suppliers, what their biggest technology challenges are at the moment. And the number one answer was integration between systems. That shows me how crucial integrations are, but also that hoteliers realized the importance of them. So let's go look at some of the details and terminology. API stands for Application Programming Interface. So it's an interface or a connector for a application or a software that has been programmed. So an API is basically the part of any software or system that lets it communicate with the outside. Let's think of uh, any software or application as a database or as a big pot of information. If you don't connect this pot with anything, there will not be any exchange of data automatically. So all data that gets into that pot needs to be put there manually and also taken out manually. An API lets you connect two different pots with each other. So let's say this pot is your PMS and this one over here, your booking engine. Your PMS already knows what rooms are available when. So rather than inputting that data again into your booking engine, you can connect them over an API that lets them communicate with each other and your booking engine will always know the availabilities that are in your PMS. When now your customer goes and searches for rooms in your hotel, he will see all the available rooms that your PMS communicated to your booking engine. And reverse, the guest enters his information, his details when he makes a reservation. And that information doesn't have to be entered manually again in your PMS, but it can through the same API be communicated back to your PMS system. Developing an interface. There are two major steps to developing any software interface. The first one is you need to connect the two systems. And the second one, you need to get them to communicate with each other and also understand each other. The first part, connecting them, let's go back to our example of the pot. You have to find the right pot, and we're talking about one pot out of millions and millions of pots all around the globe, somehow connected to the internet. Once you've found the right pot, you have identified yourself, you have passed his security, his firewall, then you can actually start communicating to each other. This is also why interfacing cloud-based solutions is much easier than legacy systems. So let's say you have your PMS running on a server at your hotel. This specific server has to be connected to each of the systems you want to interface with. If this is done with cloud-based systems, this only needs to be done once for all the connection it uses. Now, in the second step, you can really start exchanging information. And the challenge here is to make sure that both systems understand each other and speak the same language. Each database, each system has its own structure, its own data structure. Each pot has its own recipes, its own ingredients. So you need to make sure that when pot A says carrot, pot B doesn't understand apple. Let's take the example of availabilities. You have one room available. Room X is available. Now, different systems call a room differently. Some call it a room, others call it an inf code, others call it an object or a unit. 
And now the challenge of the interface is to interpret this. They have to say, when I say unit, you understand room. So they basically have to translate carrot into apple. Standards can really help here because if two systems already speak the same language, that really makes it easier. In the hotel and in the travel industry, there are some standards, but they're not used widely enough yet. The biggest ones are OTA, Open Travel Alliance Standards, and the HTNG, Hotel Technology Next Generation Standards. These are guidelines on, on the languages. They say how to understand what, how to interpret what. So if two systems already use the same standard, they speak the same language. Then you will, might still have to compensate for some dialects, but big picture, they will understand each other. In the travel industry, we use a lot of XML messages to exchange information over APIs. XML stats, stands for Extendable Markup Language. The important part here is language. XML is just like a normal language. Just this one is being used by computers to communicate over the internet. As any language, XML has a clear structure and defined rules and grammar on how to communicate. But let's look at a specific example. Here is a reservation from Mr. Jonas. If you look at it like this, it can be really overwhelming. But if you know the details you're looking for, it's really easy to find them. So let's go zoom in a little bit. Let's go just look at the guest. If you've zoomed in, if you look at the details, it gets much easier to already see some of the elements you know. Name, phone, city. If you look at a small and focused detail of an XML message, you can very easily see what the computers have been communicating about. Next time when a provider asks you for an XML log or sends you one, you know a little bit more about what they're talking about and what they want to see. It's really the only way to verify and analyze what ha happened and what the system exchanged. Was there an issue connecting to each other? Could they not talk to each other at all? Or was there a bad response? Or was it just simply that they don't speak the same language? Was there an error in how the message is set up? I hope I was able to show you why interfaces are important, how they basically work, and that you don't need to be intimidated by a language that you don't speak fluently. Let me know what you think. Let me know what other topics might be interesting for you. Like, share, and subscribe. This is Ask Your Hotel Techie. Thank you very much for your attention and stay tuned for the next video.